Genesis 34 is such a sad, sad chapter for so many reasons that we'll talk about. I'm sure you know some of the reasons why, but we're going to talk about what happens to Jacob and his family in this area of disobedience in his life. And if you remember, we went over in Genesis 33, Jacob went to a place that wasn't quite where God wanted him to. It was close to the land that God wanted him to be in, but not quite. And so Jacob is here and verse one starts off with, he let his daughter out into unknown territory. It said that Dinah wanted to go, I think it said meet with the women um, of the town. Um, and that's mistake number one. Um, but then verses two through four. Unfortunately, which is so sad and heartbreaking, Dinah was raped by Shechem, son of the ruler of the area, which was Hamor the Hivite. And Shechem was such a barbaric person, the way that he talked about Dinah and obviously treated her so barbaric and inhumane. Um, oh, and I wrote that Shechem was barbar barbaric. Um, and he said, get me this girl as my wife. You know, he just defiled her. And now let's get up close and personal here. And now he's saying, get me this girl as my wife. Verse five. Jacob heard the news about Dinah, but waited until his sons came in from the fields to react. And I thought that was, I don't know, I thought that was kind of weird. Um, as a parent, especially, I, I don't know how to feel about that, but I thought that was really strange for Jacob to do that. You know, why would you not react to that or do anything? I'm not saying he has to do something negative, but, you know, just to, to not react. I don't know, I thought that was an interesting thing. Verses 6 through 7, Hamor went to talk to Jacob about Dinah marrying Se Shechem. Um, but then Dinah's brothers found out about what happened and they were angry to say the least. Verses 8 through 12, Hamor wanted their families to marry and he opened his land to Jacob. So Hamor said, you know, you marry, you know, our daughters, we marry your daughters and we'll share the land. You can have some of our, you know, livestock and let's just uh, intermarry and, you know, what do you say? That's This is what Hamor was saying to Jacob because... Hamor's son, Shechem, wanted to marry Dinah. And Shechem offered to pay whatever they wanted for him to marry Dinah. Again, it was just, Shechem had a very unhealthy longing for Dinah from, at least what I grasped from this. It just, it was very strange and he acted in such a barbaric manner. Um, and then verses 13 through 17, Dinah's brothers deceitfully, and that's what my Bible, I read out of the NIV, and it said deceitfully. And I highlighted that because I thought it was interesting, Jacob, who was known for deception, how many times has he deceived someone? You know, he deceived Esau, he deceived twice, actually, Esau, <clears throat> the first time he deceived him out of his own um, blessing, he deceived Esau when he said, yeah, you go ahead of me and I'll catch up. I think it was just in the last chapter. Um, and he deceived, you know, many people throughout his life. So I'm not surprised, honestly, that his sons are following in that path. So they deceitfully agreed that if Shechem, Hamor, and all the men in that town circumcised themselves, and they would allow Dinah to marry Shechem. And they were smart about this because the word says, um, let's look at verses 18 through 23. Hamor and Shechem went out at once to tell the men of their city to become circumcised. And, you know, Hamor said to them, you can marry their daughters and all the men. They just acted selfishly in verses 23 through 24. They said, oh, sure. Won't all their stuff become ours as well? Yeah, I'm, I'll go for it. And so everyone is just being really selfish in this whole thing. And I'll recap that at the end as well. But you can see that they agreed because they thought, you know, well, this is really good for me. Um, it's kind of like everyone's looking at it like what's in it for me. And poor Dinah, I can't imagine how she feels. Um... So all the men of the city became circumcised. Um, that's a lot of people that, you know, Dinah's brothers were able to convince. Um, and let's see, verses 29, 25 through 29. While the men were still in pain, that's what my Bible said, it worded it like that. Sim Simeon and Levi planned to kill every male in the city. And they took Dinah back from Hamor and Shechem. They took all their wealth, women and children. And so 
um, I wrote down Simeon and Levi planned this. They planned this. They knew, you know, okay, it's just going to be them two taking down an entire city. Let's do it when they're at their weakest moment. So that's why they probably told all those men to get circumcised. This is what I'm guessing. Um, because then they were able to um, capture and kill all of the men. I can't imagine how many, you know, people that they killed. And it was just the two of them. Maybe it was a small town. I don't know. But regardless, it was just two people against all those men. And they were able to be successful. And not only did they kill every single male in the city, they also took all of their wealth and all of their women and children. They they just, they were just as barbaric as Shechem was. And it's really sad. And what's even more sad is Jacob's response. I was really taken aback. Again, nothing about Dinah, nothing about the women and children and, you know, all the men who just died. What did Jacob say? He said, you can get us in trouble with the Canaanites, Perizzites. He said, you know what, Simeon and Levi, you can get us in trouble with the people around here. And we are in few in number compared to them, the Canaanites and Perizzites. He didn't say anything about the people who died, anything about his daughter, Dinah. He was thinking about himself. And Simeon and Levi, they didn't even care. They said, should he have treated our sister like a prostitute? Um, and, you know, it's not right what they did to her. It's not right at all. Um, but nobody is taking responsibility for what happened. And I wrote, everyone is just being pretty selfish here, except for Dinah. I feel so bad for her. Self-centered type of attitude brought no true justice or peace. And then I wrote um, about deception. Jacob is a master at deception. So it's no surprise that his sons did the same. And so this is kind of how the chapter ends. Jacob is in a place of disobedience and a lot of bad things happen. A lot of people died. His daughter ended up getting raped. It's a really sad story. Very sad. And I don't know. I just, I feel for them in this time. Um, and that's kind of why when we did, when I did, um, Psalm, when I did the chapter on Psalm 46, the Bible study on Psalm 46, when it said the God of Jacob, that's why I kind of stopped myself and said, why Jacob? But first of all, that's me being judgmental. I sh should not have a judgmental attitude, but I was genuinely curious, like why it said the God of Jacob, because Jacob just time and time again, even though he loves God, he just doesn't always act in the way that, I don't know, I guess I feel judgmental even saying this, but he doesn't always act in the ways that God wants us to. Um, and you can see that here in this chapter. So it's really unfortunate. Um, but next week we'll be looking at Genesis 35 and see what happens there. Um, thank you so much for joining me today. Let me know if what you learned about the chapter and I will talk to you next time.